bottom line. Welcome, everybody. I'm excited. Uh, very dear friend back in the house. Jean Allert's back in the house, and you've seen her before, and so Jean is here. Before we start right at the top, I want to thank Storyville Coffee. Um, I know you drink coffee. Why don't you drink coffee with a purpose? Storyville Coffee, literally every single cup of coffee helps us save a life from human trafficking. Uh, go to storyvillecoffee.com, become a subscriber, number one roaster in the nation. Um, they ship it fresh to your house. Uh, you're going to discover all kinds of goodies. Their slogan is love everybody. The logo is called Flyboy because they believe the children matter and their dollars go into saving children. Uh, so check out Storyville Coffee. Uh, go order and help us in this fight. Gene Allard, welcome. Thanks. It's you're, good to be you're, back. You're just in the family. So it feels like it. Th- it should. I hope it does. Yeah. Um, you're in the big D in Dallas. Uh, to it's 108 do- degrees. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, we live here. She walked in and she goes, how do you live here? <laughs> and I go, we do. I'm from Africa. so um. Fair. I was talking to a friend yesterday. And I was saying, um, we have a city in South Africa. And the actual town's name, people can look this up, the actual town's name, that's if they haven't changed it to just some weird name with political nonsense. But the actual town's name is hot as hell. <laughs> the legal name. So you name. know what you're getting. Oh, I- I've been there when we reached 140. Hmm. I mean, sheep fall over from heat heat stroke. and heat, I mean, it's insane. Hot as hell. So from Africa. So we can deal that with that. That might be a foretaste of what we're going to talk about. Things are just going to get a little hotter. A little hotter. I think so. All right. And so um, you're one of my absolute favorite people in the world uh, because you're in this fight. You have been, like I believe God's given me, God's given you the ability and the grace to stare darkness in the face and not have it influence your life and turn your life upside down and put you on antidepressants and put you in and out of therapy in the hospital and it's a special kind of person that can do that. Um, and I think in this fight, the burnout rate is insane. And so you, I want to champion the Institute for Shelter Care, Samaritan Women, the work you do as a sister in Christ, the women of God. I want people to understand what you do. But I want to have a real conversation with you because I, as you do too, I'm praying into, okay, what's coming? Mm-hmm. And we do that a lot here. And uh, I, I told you before the show, what's on my heart is I think we are, Let's just talk about reaching a level of tolerance, which is not good, in this sexualization movement of children, of society, not just children, pornography, pastors starting to ask publicly, well, is porn really that bad? Of course, we know it's diabolical, but they are. There's a tolerance being built up. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, there's battles being lost by the good people in legislation and we write a lot of legislation i think tbr and our team i think we tracked 144 bills this last cycle we wrote on six of them that's great some of them passed one of the bills got blended with another got the kinsey institute defunded but i'm watching these legislators who are championing bills to protect children in the classroom to talk about prostitution and pornography and whatever and i'm watching them get tired Mm -hmm. i am watching them because uh, the bills read dead, 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 and there's hundreds of them, right? In the office here, I've got, I think, 90 or so bills that read dead next to it. And, mm. and it's hundreds of hours put into fighting, and then the bill dies in committee. So long-winded question to you is what I'm feeling is coming. is something we've seen before, but I'm feeling th- that the decrim movement, the decriminalization of some or all, like California will try to decrim everything, but some or all is coming. And and my fear is, or my caution is, it's even going to come from people within some of our camps because of atrophy, because they're so exhausted, right? To say, well, let's take a smaller victory. Like you said, what happened with the cannabis movement, Mm -hmm. where some states just caved. Yeah. And now they've got a disaster on hands like Oklahoma, right? So, Your thoughts on the decrim movement, Um, let's just dive into that world because I think that's coming in 2024. Yeah, well, just commentary sort of on that major trajectory. I think that we are in a place right now, and I'm 17 years into the movement, where we had a season when 
for me it was 07 to about 14 where largely people were really scattered, disconnected, there was no coordination, there wasn't public awareness. Around 12, 14, 16 in that area, that's when we saw a lot of movement domestically, um, coming at the federal level, coming at the state level, the awareness programs, funding initiatives, and there was a lot of, uh, let's put this on the public consciousness. So then you just look at the flow, and that was sort of a peak incline period of time. What is exciting about where we are now from my vantage point, but also fragile, is we've gotten to a place now where there is actually an infrastructure in place to do something about the problem. We've got 239 shelters across the United States. We've got 66 of them that serve children. We've got 34 that serve boys. All right. That is maybe not complete, but it is far better from where than we where we've been. Exactly. And, and, and I just want you to repeat some of those numbers again, because as we are celebrating those numbers, mm -hmm. we are, Yeah. right? Because from where we came, I want Americans to put it in perspective how few it actually is Yeah. for the size of the problem. So just run those numbers. Shelters, and when we talk shelters, we talk, we're not talking about just the women's shelter down the street. Right. We're talking about... Programs that are specific to trafficking, where Correct. the people are dedicated to that population, Correct. Um, focusing their training, focusing their expertise and their programming. For Trauma dealing informed with therapy, that. et cetera, et cetera. So Precisely. give me those numbers again. So 239 as of today in the United States that are open and actively serving survivors. The average shelter in the US, to your point, is not large. We're not talking about a hospital size uh, nope. institution. They average nine beds. And so most of them are functioning out of residential homes, maybe in a suburban neighborhood, maybe uh, somewhere you know in the metro area of Dallas, for example. We still have states that don't have services. There are seven states that have no shelters at all and nine states that only have one. But we have some states like Texas, Florida, California, where there are a decent number of options. And we still are living in an environment where survivors are moved around to get the right services is whatever's appropriate. Con constantly, yeah. What's exciting though, in terms of building out infrastructure is, all right, so we've got a bit of real estate in terms of options of care. We also have some new players that have come in and offered their gifts. We've got a new class of funders, people who are starting to take the long view, doing multi-year gifts, kind of saying really into sustaining uh, space, which is exciting. We see more businesses starting to say, I wanna understand what this means, human trafficking in general for my company. We've got people like uh, Wings of the Way and Freedom Aviation Network, yes. who are pilots who yeah. will fly survivors around to anywhere who we've for used, placement. Yeah, yeah, utilized, exactly. absolutely. So there is a buildup, and that's why I say that's exciting. We're seeing, okay, we are now, we are equipping still in the current tense um, to deal with the problem. But to your point, I am likewise seeing that there is a bit of a fatigue uh, across the board, not just the people who are working daily with survivors, but there's also a dispersion of the people on the front line who are looking for the problem. We can't just have the real estate waiting for the referrals. What has really changed in the last three years is the number of people whose eye is no longer on the goalpost, yeah. uh, whether that's in law enforcement, whether that's broadly the Department of Justice, uh, whether that's uh, government appropriations for this. We're seeing such a movement to other areas of criminality. Naturally, I'm mm -hmm. not disputing. Narcotics. Yeah. Right. Not, not, not competing with them and seeing, yes, those are likewise problems. Um, but it begs the question, are we going to at some point reorient back or are we going to get to a point where if that runs too long, we will start to say, well, is it really a problem anymore? Yeah. Is it really that big of a deal? Yeah. So that's, that's the balance there. But now let's add this other element that is coming in. And that is sort of the sneaky backdoor movement of the over-sexualization of children, the tools that are in kids' hands that allow them to now exploit themselves, the disruption of the triad of the victim, the perpetrator, and the yep. facilitator. Yep. Facilitator's out of the equation. Yep. It's direct to consumer now. Absolutely. The pimp. Right? Uh, the pimp is out of the... Pimp's gone. Instagram's the pimp. Their days. TikTok's the pimp. Absolutely. Yep. 
Absolutely. Either drugs are your pimp or your parent is your pimp or you're just doing it to yourself. Well, while you're talking, Rebecca, why don't you pull up that one one uh, ad I sent you as you keep going, Jean. I want to sure. show I want to show people something. So I'm particularly watching and we are this new f- emerging phenomenon of children who have grown up in an understanding that their worth is financial. Their worth is not from God. Their worth is not their placement in community or what they can contribute. Their worth is purely financial. And so kids are learning from a very early age, right? Well, you better figure out how you're going to make some money, how you're going to compete that way. And so we've got girls in affluent suburban neighborhoods who are going on to particular websites, apps, whatnot. And it may start out innocently. She's selling pictures of her feet right? She's, uh, she's just going online and just doing what seems on the surface as benign, but what we don't understand, which is what you talk about often, is that as a form of passive grooming. That's right. It's normalizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, desensitizing. Desensitizing yeah. us to it. And we're saying, and you know what, this is the thing that people don't understand because they say, oh, I get the idea that the picture of her feet is going to sometimes lead to something that is truly pornographic. It's already pornographic because we don't know what the consumer's doing in response to those photos. Exactly. It's already pornographic. It's it's, it's foot fetish. It's like, well, what are these guys? What what excites them, right? right? And so it doesn't matter. It it it's feeding into the culture that's demanding the exploitation of persons, whether that is your feet, your eyes, right? Full nudity. I want you to look at this. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit so we can just see this girl's, at least her eyes, uh, Rebecca? I don't know if you can. Yes. Oh, good heavens. Okay. Yep. This is a child. Absolutely. Okay. Now, scroll back. Uh, hold it up for a minute. Jan- Dan, stay on that shot. Now, scroll down for me. Um, this is a site um, where these kids, they post. But here's the deal. This site is tied to a massage parlor. This is an actual location Mm -hmm. in Tyler, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is an actual massage parlor. And this is an ad on a site. Now, if you go to the massage parlor's site, this is not on their website, of course. But the girls inside the massage parlor posts on dark sites, black sites, pulling people to the parlor. Mm -hmm. So to the public eye, face value, this is a foot spa, okay, mm-hmm. that performs foot spa services, licensed by the state, mm. business license, operating in broad daylight. But when you go to the places we go in on the dark web and you start seeing the people inside and then they give you the location to come meet them, I want, I'm not going to read it out, but you read this. Open seven days a week, 24-7. We have many certified massage therapists here, okay? Clean in a separate room. This is an actual physical location, okay? And you saw that's a child that posted. You can choose your favorite girl and a 40% discount on every massage. Enjoy essential massage, and then you read. Mm-hmm. Foot spa. We're not hiding it anymore. This is plain sight. Mm-hmm. This is not even... And I yesterday worked through maybe 150 of these, mm-hmm. okay? All right. Now, yes, to those asking, are you going after them? Yes, but <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And so and so, this is broad daylight. If you'll pull that down for me, please. This is... Right, but to your point, so we have that on Moss that we could very easily get to a point where we just get so tired of, well, everybody smokes weed. That's my point. What's the big deal? Because it's such a flood. And 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 it's overwhelming. The people in the fight, you and I, we're celebrating that, man, resources are growing. The donor class is changing. It's multi-year. It's legacy. They understand the HROI, the humanitarian return on investment. Mm-hmm. That's way more important. That's amazing. Yep. But the legislative class, which is highly under-informed, mm-hmm. not trained, don't know the facts, who still yesterday thought this was prostitution and now they engaging with some anti-trafficking organizations, the politicians. Here's what's happening to them. They go, you know what? I'm going to fight this. Mm. I'm going to fight this. This is an evil. Everybody's going to jump on board with me. And then they get a bill. And we write 
a lot of these bills. And they're gung-ho. And then they don't get a single committee member to join them on the bill. And then they got to work harder than they've ever worked in their lives to get a co-sponsor, House, Senate, Senate, House. And then it gets stuck in a committee where it's sent to die. And then they got to fight like heck. And then they get ostracized for running a bill to protect children from predators from their own party. Mm -hmm. And then they go, wait a minute. This is diabolical. And I go, um, you're touching a root issue. And the true colors are being shown now from the people in your party. And then they lose. And then they come back the second year and they go, you know what? I I'm willing to swing at it again. And then they lose again. Out of, out of 67 in Texas, two passed. Mm -hmm. Okay? My concern is that the legislator are going to go, it's kryptonite. I don't want to touch it anymore. I, 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 because they can only run so many bills a session with their names on it. And th their careers really, truly are based on, did you pass legislation? Right, what's winnable? Mm -hmm. And so that's what the district attorneys are doing. Oh, I'm, we're not taking child sex crimes cases. That's hard to win. We'll, we'll plead it down to a marijuana charge, a drug charge, a kidnapping charge even. Mm -hmm. Stolen auto theft gun right that's my concern is that the legislators are going to go do what happened with the green wave with marijuana and go man we got to get a victory here somewhere well and look at and uh, that they will say let's decriminalize a section of this sure because we have this almost apathy sandwich that's coming Correct. in together so if you look at that from a legislative perspective from a top-down perspective there's a this is too much fight i can't get support i can't get my name on things you know i'm going to focus on things i can win right so that's that then we look at the city level mm. right oh. and now you've got mayors who are saying you know what, I'm just going to stop bothering with prostitution. I'm just not even going to, we're not even going to arrest for it anymore, right? I'm from Baltimore. They don't arrest for no. prostitution no. anymore. Mm -hmm. Urination on the street and a bunch of things. Frankly, the things that are nuisance crimes, which is frankly where prostitution used to come out of, nuisance, nuisance crimes, right? Public nuisance. And so they're saying, well, we're just not even going to bother. So that's the apathy at the root level, right? And at the area level. And I think we are also, quite frankly, as you talk about this a lot, we're just in a state where America's getting tired. Mm -hmm. It's like, I only have so much I can care about. Tired I of the fight. I only have so much that I can fight for and yeah. care for. And there is just And, and then I'd say here's this alter element of thinking a person in the White House can go fix all of this. Mm. And I go, um, you can't talk about foreign policy in the same posture as you talk about sexual exploitation, mm. okay? Foreign policy, we make a decision. You know what? We're going to tax China on all imports, 15%. Great foreign policy. Quick fix. Big win. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Uh, you don't have quick fixes like that. Right. In an immoral movement where your populace are exploiting their own children. Mm -hmm. Where unbelievable study that on your hands show that 25 to 47 percent of all trafficking is familial right now it's the in the u.s in the u.s now it's the caregiver mm -hmm. it's the mom mm -hmm. excuse me the president not going to fix that right that is a christ identity a heart issue it's a moral issue in the home you don't fix that with mm -hmm. policy mm -hmm. you don't fix that with legislation we've got a we've got an identity crisis that is showing its head or multiple heads of this dragon in the exploitation of persons. Right. And I think my concern is that there's so much of it that, yeah, they go, well, it's just too much. Let's just legalize some of it. And my concern when I looked at, and I, and I did a lot of this work consulting in Africa and within Corsi, and when we look at the Netherlands and we look at France mm -hmm. and we look at Switzerland, Switzerland, Sweden, South Africa, South Africa right now, they've bought in decrim. Mm -hmm. They are pushing decriminalization of prostitution full bore. The president, Cyril Ramaphosa, said, what's prostitution? Nobody gets hurt. This is the president of a nation, right? Because the fight's so big that they just go, you know what? Just give in to it. Right. And it's, it's anti-God. It's like giving in to a sin. You know what? Just make it legal. That'll make it good with God. No, it does not. And as we know, every study I've ever seen, and, and, and disagree with me if, if, if 
if you have a different opinion. Every study I've seen, every place I've like looked into, where you have legalized any form of sexual exploitation, Nevada, mm-hmm. right? Legal brothels, not on the strip, off the strip. Right. Sex trafficking goes through the roof. And other forms of violence against women and well, girls violence in particular. Violence goes mm-hmm. through the roof. Mm-hmm. Minor sexual exploit goes through the roof. Mm-hmm. It, rape. Mm-hmm. Rape. It does not. And then it really muddies the waters for law enforcement. Because now what? Right. And then if you combine that in states such as Nevada and, and, and California who are fighting to lower the age of consent at the same time. So now we got statutory rape. That's gone. Now we have or the UN report that said it should be 12 years old, right? For consent, right? Mm-hmm. Now UN's for 12. California is at least trying for you know 14, 14. but but, mm-hmm. but 12, or or California's got really good anti-trafficking laws, 17 and under. We don't need to prove force, fraud, or coercion. Well, now you have to mm-hmm. because if the age of consent is 16, well then good luck. And and I think they would go 14. Good luck. So now the 14-year-old with a 45-year-old, I now have to prove that now it's no longer a victim. The child's no longer in it. This is insanity. So the co- the cocktail of all of that right, and legalizing an element of it, even if it's not full decrim, because yeah. I don't know that they get full decrim right away, but some sort of decriminalization, right? It's a disaster. And, and I think we're on the brink of it. I, I agree. And, uh, you know, won't say that I exactly lay awake every night thinking about it, no. but let's say every no. other, uh, because it is such a plausible concern. And let me add another element to that, just in terms of the carnage that will result from that. So if we move to the legalization of uh, prostitution, of uh, sex trafficking, or at least the decriminalization of it, it really all comes down to consent, right? And that is the, the crux of the issue there. But the The unintended consequence that I think people aren't paying attention to is if we decriminalize that in this country, and let's say that that happens in a top-down way overnight, right? Then likewise, overnight, the whole concept of what is a victim implodes. Gone. It implodes. So we have a variety of structures where we offer victim remedies, where we have crime victim funds, where we have services specifically for people who have been victimized, where we have approaches, trauma-informed care, go down the list. So overnight we say, well, yesterday you were a victim, but today you're not good luck Now, all the wounding that we have talked about in prior shows and you have with your other guests about what is the victimology, the history of somebody that gets them to a point of vulnerability for exploitation, those things don't go away. No, they still don't go away. The wounds are still there. Of course. But the label changes in such a profound way that what we would be saying is far more than you're now an empowered woman to make your own entrepreneurial choices, which is what we're being sold, that argument would be. But we're also saying, and for those of you who were rendered vulnerable through these circumstances in your life, too bad for you. Yep. Culturally, we look at a girl like Olivia Dunn. We look at, you know, collegiate athletes, NCAA superstar athletes that are saying, you know what, I think my degree doesn't matter. I'm here to play sport because I'm making $100,000 a month on selling my body. Right. And I'm watching the college community celebrate it. Oh, this is cool. Oh, she's hot. She's. And I go, wait a second. Wait a second. She is trafficking mm-hmm. herself. Mm-hmm. Literally, with no pimp, uh, can you throw up a little logo of a little organization here real quick that I think is an enemy of the state? Um, uh, Dan will go to it when we got it up. There we go. Mm-hmm. like for you to talk to me about these guys. Well, I'm very concerned about this because in the area of self-exploitation, this is uh, the, the site du jour right? It could change. Uh, This and TikTok and other sites like Chatterbait and places like that where kids are being introduced this as sort of an innocuous way of popularity, Mm -hmm. of uh, attention seeking, right? And it's glorified. It's glorified. It's celebrated. It is a platform where you can 
fill those emotional holes, those relational holes that you don't have elsewhere uh, with perfect strangers, and they can invite you to do things. And uh, those don't have to appear, again, as we've talked about with feet, it doesn't have to appear on the surface as sexual, right? But it is really tragic because of what it is saying to a child about their worth. Absolutely. Yeah. It, well, it destroys it. Mm -hmm. It destroys it. It absolutely puts your worth in in what someone else is willing to pay for you. And, you know, I, I equate it to, and it's going to be a weird equation. Just hang with me for a minute. It's the aging singer. Okay. Oh. It's the Christina Aguilera. Oh, it's got Tom Jones in my no, mind. Oh, Tom, <laughs> take, no, take Tom Jones, you know, take Christina, take Ariana Grande, take Drake for the, for the young ones. Mm -hmm that in one moment sells out stadiums mm -hmm. and i'll never forget and and i'll leave the names uh, because i've been around a lot of very very high profile singers and i'm at an event one night and i'm in the back it's a billionaire that set up a tent in his but this is a tent that holds a thousand people so it's a it's a, it's a mansion tent mm -hmm. right and i'm in the green room in a in an american icon in the black community is singing that night mm. and I'm in the green room with her and her band and she's crying and I said you okay and she goes I just don't know how I got here and I said what do you mean and she goes I'm singing for 50 people at a party I feel like I'm rented meat mm. I sold out stadiums at some point the value mm -hmm. that they're giving Miss Dunn on OnlyFans it'll diminish. Yeah. Yeah. And what does that do to her worth internally? Mm -hmm. What, what, when they move on to the next girl and are not willing to pay you anymore? And what now when you go and you go, okay, that phase of my life, right, is now over and now I want to go, you know, I woke up and I want a family and then all that exploitation is out there. Yeah. And you can't get it back. Well, and look at the, look at the, meter so that phenomenon being static right that that you are on this adrenaline right that becomes the drug or whatever it is that feedback loop right is it gotta have it gotta have it gotta have it. and for a while you might ride that wave but the crash is coming yeah. right what we were seeing 20 years ago in the anti-trafficking space as we were ministering to people in you know street level prostitution or massage parlors or whatnot clubs, there yeah. was a fair number of the population of women who were in their 40s 50s and they were getting to the point where they were sick of being sick and tired of being tired right so the crash for them was happening around 40 50 years of age but they were also folks who got inducted around 18 20 right yes, so yes. lifespan wise now what we've done was we've shifted that meter right we've shifted that meter to Crushed boy at timeline. 10 years old you better make sure that the whole world thinks you're fabulous inducted at 10 he's going to crash not at 40 that's right he's crashing at 25 that's right that's one of the things we talk about in our space all the time is that we have got to start being prepared for a very different version yep. of and i will say victim Yep. but a very different version of wounding. Spiritually, it's the same. And is the community ready for that? The, the, the therapeutic, I don't think they're, we're going to have sympathy for that. The therapeutic community, the, 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 the aftercare community, is, is, it, is it ready for that? I no, mean, we're not prepared for beca that. Because I'll tell you right now, definitely nobody that's today going through any school of psychology or psychiatric school, I mean, they're being decimated. Mm -hmm. They're being threatened with their licenses if they consider a faith-based solution. Right. They're being threatened that their license would be taken away if they don't present, present and affirm mm -hmm. every option under the sun at the first encounter right. with a person who's been victimized, who has no identity, and say, well, let me affirm some others for you. And let me, you know, it's, it's diabolical. Right. And so we're seeing, we're having a really, really hard time mm -hmm. finding therapists. And then the second thing is lawyers to defend the victims and the survivors. It's it's just, so I'm seeing these chasms starting to be created. One of the chasms that you alluded to earlier, which I absolutely 100% agree with, um, I still haven't found anything we don't agree on in, in this space, maybe because we're led by the Holy Spirit, but Amen. is is this giant gap, this gaping hole that's 
that's just ripping open overnight where law enforcement is no longer looking for Mm -hmm. the victim or referring those who need help for shelter. They are being pulled from these units. Yeah. And placed elsewhere. Oh, what we've if, seen a dramatic shift. Into that we've a seen a bit. dramatic shift, and I would say uh, more poignantly in the last two years, but it obviously has been building. Um, I would say expressed uh, in data form now more this year in uh, 2023 as people are starting to see, okay, we can't blame that on COVID. We can't blame that, right? right? But there are so many other things that we've tried to say. What is that indicative of? Part of it is in changing leadership has been a significant impact and we would be naive to think that it doesn't uh, have that impact. That trickle down effect, if you think of something just like the Department of Justice, if we say here are our new priorities, again, legitimate priorities, but if we're going to take entire units of law enforcement officers and say, we have got to move you to a completely different role, we're going to take you out of Let's SVU, be Special Victims Units. Exactly. Or, 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 or you know. Um, well, I know complete a, a vice units of team. human trafficking. Or human inner trafficking. A SWAT right. team, a special ops team, a Where special saying, response team. You now, for the next three months, are coming to Texas. Yep. From the other side of the country, you're coming to Texas and you are going to be on this um, assignment, you know, for the next three months or extended to six months. Now, That is such a long period of time in human trafficking life, right? Because you are finessing so many details to try to collect the evidence that you need. And it's taking 18 to 24 months for a case to go to trial. You take that critical investigator out for six months, that thing's dead on assignment. And that that investigator is not coming to Texas to fight human trafficking. It's coming to become an administrator to push paper at the border. Or babysit people at hospitals. Or babysit people at hospitals. And we're watching this across the country. I don't think people have any idea yeah. that we go down to the border and we'll have, I'm standing with a guy and I'm talking about a, a, a law enforcement officer getting emotional going, I, I, I'm 600 miles from my home, out of my jurisdiction. People don't have a clue that this is happening. And, and he goes, I'm working 16 hour days. I can't go home, you know, and, and I really can't enforce the law. Right. I'm babysitting X. I'm babysitting Y. I'm pushing paper. I'm processing, you know, and none of this is what I signed up for. I mean, Americans have no idea and it's decimating the good men and women from areas where we need it most. And like you said, you can't. I Six weeks, six months, you remove it for a month. Mm-hmm. And you're getting behind the curve. I'm at this point now. I'm trying to track a gene. And an interesting question to you is, I feel like almost every 10 days, I'm in this rhythm where I feel like almost every 10 days, either just God reveals something new to me in the fight, or it feels like the fight is making a micro change, hmm. or there's something new. There's another element. It's just like saying, it's like juggling. It's like I'm juggling five balls. We're getting pretty good. Eh, We're not great, but we're juggling five balls. All of a sudden, it's ball six, Mm. right? And I'm feeling like every 10 days, there's another ball in the air, whether it is, oh, here's another state that's saying we're going to decriminalize. Or recently, you got a governor, J.B. Pritzker of Illinois, and Pritzker goes, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to take fetal cells from aborted babies, and we're going to sew them in the back of rats, and we are going to test things on children and basically become the new Alfred Kinsey. Uh, Honestly. And he also says that anybody, not an American citizen can be a law enforcement officer. Correct. So, well, he, no, he made that law and arrest Americans Mm -hmm. and be armed and weaponized. And I go, Oh, here's another ball because now I got law enforcement officers that yesterday was a Cuban citizen, maybe of a faith affiliation that does not frown upon abusing women. There you go. But it's now the law enforcement officer. Maybe uh, coming from a culture where children are property. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. You're going to arrest Americans, but he's not a citizen, but it's, but, and we're going to weaponize. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. And it's just like balls just get introduced mm-hmm. into this juggling act. And at the same time, you're pulling law enforcement out of the conversation. Mm-hmm. In order for, and you know this, so I'm really just preaching to the choir here, in order for the anti-trafficking response to actually work, it is insufficient for me to say, okay, my little piece of it is victim services and the restorative care process, but we are wholly dependent 
on the upstream parts. We are wholly dependent on the people who are doing the interdiction work to identify the victims. Yeah. We shouldn't be out there banging down doors. That's no. completely inappropriate. No, what you do. But they need to be there. So you think of it as the funnel, yeah. right? Yeah. And we have to be dependent upon that in order for the whole process to work. And we have definitely, as we're surmising now, it's unfortunate that it has taken us a while to build this infrastructure on this side of the response. And now the front end has fallen apart. And you know, that is predominantly our focus in rescue has become, I mean, by God's grace, somehow this has been, I mean, I, I, yeah, numbers don't matter, but, but a lot, a lot. Every life matters. And it's daily. Right. And so, and it's just, and it's all for us. It's all, you know, it's American citizens. Mm -hmm. It's Americans. Yeah. And this, this is where the penny needs to drop. I, I thank you for sound of freedom. Thank you for the awareness, Tim, but this is a whole different ball game here when it's mom selling her own daughter. Yeah, you know, and taking her daughter to the drag show at five, mm -hmm. and you know, this is a different element, is it? You know, and so on that front end where we operate, and I think that's why we work so beautifully with you, as we understand, hey, Gene, you got to educate us here. What happens when they get to you? What can we learn from that right. to go identify the potential victim mm -hmm. upstream, the child that's already, you know, in your beautiful you know, illustration of Maslow's hierarchy of needs in Sex Nation. Shameless plug, watch the movie Sex Nation. <laughs> if you haven't, come on, man. Do you not care about your family? <laughs> Good gracious. Preaching the truth. I mean, and Gene does an incredible job in Sex Nation breaking this down. Look, it's, 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 it's needs and wants and desires mm -hmm. and, you know, and needs can be exploited. And mm -hmm. so... So we are in this place where I want to fortify upstream and go, okay, wait a minute. If it looks like it's going to go towards culturally atrophy is sitting and they're just going to go, ah, you know, maybe a piece of this is okay. It's not. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go beat that drum and go, it's not okay. It's never okay. Exploitation is never okay in no form. Mm -hmm. Not exploiting her feet for some dude to get off on or whatever. This is not okay. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, can't do it without a cohesive fight, you know, and, and I just want to hammer a point home to something you said earlier, 200 and something shelters, 30, how many for, for children? 30, uh, 66 for children, 66, okay, 34 for boys. Okay. I want to, want to give people a perspective here. 200 shelters, 200 and something. Okay. Average nine beds. That's 1,800 beds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a crime. In Texas alone, where we have 79,000 victims. Mm -hmm. Just put that in perspective. Right. And Gene and I, for you, the viewer, we're celebrating that we have reached a mile marker that's exciting because where we come from, uh, good luck. Gene was like Lone Ranger. Right. <laughs> it was very right, lonely like, back like, then. Like Teddy Roosevelt <laughs> on the horse, right? And going, you know, this way. I you don't know, know if that's flattering. For For... <laughs> For, for shelter care, right? But but if you really look at it, it's dismal yeah. that that culturally we're not. And then the awareness of, oh, human trafficking is awful. Mm -hmm. And I go, yes, it is. Now, can we talk about your community? What do you mean my community? Can we talk about your home? Can we talk about maybe your conduct on por in pornography feeds the beast? You know, it's something that always gets me when we're at the border is people go, oh, it's awful, these, pe these traffickers. They're bringing these kids across the border. It's awful. These children, where are they going to go? The government's lost 85,000. Wrong number. It's more like a quarter million, honestly, mm. because they, Mallorcas is not going to report the actual number. But let's say it's 85,000. That's 85,000 lives. My Messiah says one. I leave 99 for one. Mm -hmm. We fight for one. Yep. You fight for one. To an audience of one. Okay. Yes. 85,000 children lost going to traffickers. It's unbelievable. And I go, yeah, it's horrible. Who's buying? And they go, what do you mean? Who's they bringing the kids from Guatemala to the U.S.? They're not selling them to Guatemalans. Who's buying sex? The Americans. So we have a cultural issue where we tell the world, bring them, we'll buy them. Mm -hmm. Post your nudes, I'll, I'll watch them. Uh, say you're available and we show up. Culturally, in a state where you're sitting is the only state in the country where soliciting or buying sex is a felony. Hmm. Felony. And I told you, I went through 200 
youth yesterday in Texas. Mm -hmm. It's not a deterrent. A law that's not enforced means zero. Indeed. Zero. Indeed. And when you don't have law enforcement to enforce the law, the traffickers don't go, oh, it's the law, we can't do it. Please, come on. They, they are emboldened. They go, though it's a felony, look at them. They're nowhere to be found. We'll just post it in broad daylight. That's a child. Yeah. A minor. That place still exists. I checked this morning. No one's raided it. There's no warrant. We're now going for a warrant. We're triangulating this. We want, and I, who knows what we're going to find? Probably multiple foreign girls with passports seized that's working 18 hours a day, selling their bodies under foot spa. And it's in broad daylight, right? This is in every town in America. This mm -hmm. is not even. And so, so no, we've got a problem societally where I think, and, and, and I'm going to just beat this drum. Will we humble ourselves and repent? I was hoping you would go there. And let the Lord hear our outcry of repentance, conviction of the heart, saying, Lord, forgive us for what we've done, mm -hmm. for what we've allowed to happen, mm -hmm. for what we've facilitated, for what we've demanded. Will you please forgive us? And he says, I will hear your prayer, and I will heal your land, your land, your marriage, your land, your physical temple, your land, your home, your state. My concern on a political level is I believe that a nation has the leadership they deserve. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, by our conduct, we don't deserve godly leaders. Yeah, we, we really need to function on two levels, uh, I believe. Uh, and it's supported scripturally. We are supposed to be, you know, in the world, but not of the world, right? Yep. And But, but the, what that means for even people who don't profess Christ is that, that we have to understand that there are all of these, all we're talking about is different forces, Correct. right? There are forces that are bearing down on Correct. all of this, whether they're bearing down culturally, financially, on the families, right? Politically, these are all forces that are all moving. We have to engage in those. We we are, so the apathy, back to that again. No longer observe, but engage. Exactly. Yeah. We have to engage, and for those of us who... Uh, are Christian, but I would say all people of faith need to engage in the spiritual realm as well. And we need to realize that we have, we, it's not an either or, well, let's just pray ourselves out of this situation and not do anything politically. I mean, we're definitely seeing that yeah. things like in the school systems, we took our eye off the prize and we, yes. to your point about government, we have now in governance over our children exactly what we deserve because we stopped paying attention. We stopped paying attention. And now in whatever you forfeit, yeah. I've learned this. What you forfeit, you are going to have a fight to mm -hmm. get it back. Yeah. Satan, don't, he doesn't just give back. You've got to go plead with God and make right with God and go take it back. And it's a fight. And that's why we see the school board fight the way it is. And that's why we're seeing it such a, you know, where, where you feel like you win a victory here. Uh, and, and then in another area, they come up with something new, something else. You know, they'll start pushing gender affirming care or they'll start. I mean, praise God. In the, look, th just think about this for a second. We had to write a law in the state of Texas, a law, okay, that says, you know what? Maybe it's not a good idea to cut body parts off of children. Maybe that's going to have consequence. Mm -hmm. The concept of needing to write a law because they're in fact cutting body parts off of human beings, mm -hmm. right? No, it's, it leads us to this. Can you even believe we're having this conversation? No, this, right? It's insane. Yeah. It's got to break God's heart. It's insane. Now there's a law because Texas was number one hmm. in double mastectomies for 12 year olds. Some doctors were booked out six months in advance. Right, it's a, it, it, there's a guy that Americans don't seem to know about because they don't want to study history, right? Dr. Mengele, hmm. this was Hitler's right. right hand guy that literally operated on children while alive mm -hmm. to see what happens if he takes a piece of the brain out. This is real. Now we got Pritzkers and we got you know cutting body parts off of children and all on what, right? So this is my, my... Or we'll take your children away from you if you don't affirm them. This is my concern. I mean, in that seat, and it's a show we just posted, and I'm asking everybody, subscribe to this channel. Help us get 
thought leaders like this out to other people, please promote it. We had uh, Jeff Tooley sit in that seat. Jeff, go watch that episode if you haven't. Jeff is a detransitioner. Mm -hmm. And we just, I mean, it's not posted yet, right? Or it's posted. Yeah, it's up. You should watch this. Mm -hmm. Jeff sits here. It's heartbreaking. And he talks about having lived as a woman. He's born biological male. Lived as a woman for 20 years. What the movement taught him. How they brainwashed him. How they abandoned him. How when he had all his gender affirming care. He's left in a back room. Became septic. Nobody told him. Hey you'll never be sexually active again. Jeff says in the show. Yaku. The trans movement. Not trans. They're bisexual. Though, look how few of them actually go and have the surgery. Mm -hmm. Because in the movement, the adults, they know if you do the surgery, you're not going to be sexually active. Right. You're going to have a hard time urinating, right? But they're pushing the kids to have the surgeries. Knowing, knowing well what it's going to do to that child. He detransitioned. His life is forever altered very challenged Mm -hmm. okay now he met god god brought him to his senses god God made me a male and he's a man today he's he's living in his in identity but irreparable damage to his physical body his heart god healed right but this is but they know he goes yaku i was trained as a trans activist i was trained by the movement i Took the puberty blockers. Here's what they don't tell the kids. Here's what it physically does to your body. Here's what it did to my mind. Right? So he said, forget about this trend. Those who are pushing it, they, they don't have the surgery. But kids, it's 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 diabolical. And, and, and then the same trans movement comes to me often and they go, well, do you know how many trans kids are being trafficked? And I go, um, yeah. Do you know that you desensitized them? Do you know that you sexualized them? Do you know that you broke their defenses down and told every predator online, go, you know, fair game, go go at it? Yeah, of course. Yes, we know. You know, and so this is where we're at. And, and, And that's why my concern is that we can't get people grow weary and get tired. Mm hmm. Including the politicians, you you you've got to you've got to lock arms with NGOs, like Gene, like us, and others. There's so many amazing, unbelievable warriors in this fight, right? That you could list by name. Uh, where we need we need more, and we need people to stay in it and not grow weary and keep their eye on the Lord. Psalm 23, man, I'll pull you through this valley. You just look, gaze upon the Lord, and we will see a day here. We will get through this. And we will see a day when, when the Lord not just heal, but defend, protect. We'll see a fortification on the front end. But I think um, we got to brace ourselves for the conversation about, well, should a portion of this be legal? Well, I want to say that just like you're talking about with the trans, uh, the detransitioners, there is the early signs of new voices coming, very credible voices coming into the conversation, if we will make space for those voices. One of the things that's been an incredible privilege in my life, and when you opened and said, you know, how could I have possibly made it this long in this field because it's so difficult and all this, it is because of the particular graces that are afforded to you along the way. And some of those graces are being able to see the new voices that are coming into the movement. I Uh, I want very much to protect the restorative care work that we do because I believe that what happens there is that an individual has an opportunity to attend to the question that is ultimately the question we all must grapple with is, who am I? What's my identity? And you are going to search and search and search until you come up with an answer with that. And unfortunately, what we've done is we've said, well, the world tells you who that is. We've moved so far away from let God tell you who Absolutely. you are. Right? The world will define now, your worth and your identity. And, yeah. and I think that's why we have such a desperate, if not frenetic state right now, is because the world doesn't have an answer for you. So everybody's looking everywhere. Can I find myself in sports? Can I find myself in money? Can I find myself in sex? Can I find myself? I can't. I can't. 
because it's insufficient. It will never, ever be able right. to answer the fundamental question. But what we get to see in those treasured moments is when somebody has that opportunity to reclaim that journey of identity, of, of formation, of who am I, and who am I when you take away all of those forces that we're talking Come about. On. It's such a special place to give somebody the opportunity to say, let me find out who you are. Let you find out who you are. And let's start without those with, influences. And in let's those start voices. with the author of uh, who absolutely, you are. Absolutely, yeah. Right, and it's yeah. a it's an amazing space. And I want to stay on the positive. Uh, and I want to encourage because people listen to conversations like this, and they're always like, "Okay, now what do I do? What yes. do I do?" Yes. Right. I think we have to have conversations about identity. I think we have to have conversations about who is the person you want to be? What is the community you want to live in? What are the kinds of people you want to be? What's the nation you want to be in? And if any of that is dissatisfactory, that's telling you where you should be engaging. That's how I got into the fight because I met Heather on the streets of Baltimore and I said, I can't live in a world like that. And that was we're, my we're, invitation. We're human beings, said, yeah, where human beings are sold like a piece of meat and exactly. have no value. And because I always, I tell, I tell kids this: the world that's telling you who you are, they don't know who they are. Right. I, mean, yeah. I don't need to tell somebody. I need to lead them to the author. Right. And the finisher of the work, the mm -hmm. one that knows the amount of hair on their head. And again, even for the non-believer, I say to the non-believer normally, "How's it working out so far?" Have you not tried that before? Yeah. Did that work for you? No. I can ask Tom Cruise today. Tom, highest grossing box office movie, Top Gun. How did that work for your relationship with your daughters? Mm -hmm. uh, there is none. Th those things don't fill the holes that matter. Right. Th those things don't fill the voids that was left by an abusive father or a an ab abandonment or the lack of identity or sexual abuse, or trauma, or suicide ideation, or a lie from Satan that you grabbed on as a child that you have no worth or value, or you're the last one out. Nothing this world offers can solve a single one of those problems. Right. Zero. It actually makes it worse, ad nauseum, to death. To the, and if it's not physical death, to the death of the human spirit, the will to dream and fight, the will to see your place in society to make a difference, to make the life of someone else better, uh, why you're here, the world has zero and definitely not money. Mm -hmm. Definitely not money. That God is a vicious God. And so... No, f thank you for the work in, in restorative care and shelter care. And thank you for the, the, the path you're cutting and pioneering in that space, Gene, um, for, for being a constant resource of reason of like, okay, now what do we do? Where do we go? Um, you know, as we, as we rescue, as we go through, or God rescues through us, as we go and teach in schools, or I think... I don't know. God's given us the, the beautiful blessing to physically train 60,000 people this mm. year. Well, all of a sudden, a mom raises her hand. Ah, that's in my house. Uh, that happened to me. Call Jean. My mm. team knows her now. Oh, call Jean, right? Yeah, call Jean. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what do we do? It's good. Yeah, I know. And I mean, and I mean so thank you. And, and God bless you. And I ask for prayers. And I ask people to go to the Institute for Shelter Care. We'll throw it on the screen and learn about the work you do and how they can walk with you and pray for you and support what you're doing. And then of course with us at help jbm.org, the work we do. And in this, the, 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 getting the message out, ha amplifying voices like yours. Yeah. And so for the people watching, subscribe and promote this because this is sound incredible wisdom from, from, Gene, who's been in this fight a long time, I've been in it for so long, I don't remember how long. And, and, but, but still, I wake up every morning and I go, God, thank you mm -hmm. that I get to Absolutely. serve your kingdom. Absolutely. In this and space. I know we have spent this, this hour and we've thrown out all kinds of things like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Look at all this problem and that's yeah. coming and this isn't getting better or not. And I, I just want to make sure that your listeners understand that we are strong and of good courage. 
Uh, the people who yeah. are in this work are resolute. We understand that no matter how those tides move, no matter how those forces or those winds blow, um, there are people that have been called, and may, that may be somebody who's listening, uh, that you will find a strength you never knew you had. You will get a reward you never knew was possible. Um, being able to be that along the companion with somebody who is um, going from what the world has lied to them and told them about who they are, and the world has done everything to destroy them, and for them to take that unbelievably courageous journey and say, there's got to be something more I believe is that Holy Spirit inspired quest yeah. within them yeah. and we get to be a part of it. And I believe more are coming. I really do. Yeah. And we, and we are serving a God that's alive and Jesus is on the throne and we, we, we fight this fight from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. Not a day does your team, our team go from a place of defeat. It's victory, but we identify the problems, fortify and move. And we're seeing lives restored every day, every single day. It's such an incredible in incredible uh, every day i talk to my sister mm -hmm. i go how good is god how can god restore a life how unbelievable and if for one then for any if for one then for anyone mm -hmm. and so it's there hope and redemption is there for someone listening there is a way out there is a way through there is victory on the other side there is a new life there is another way and so uh reach out please if if you need help if you're struggling either with identity pornography, abuse, trafficking. If you're the one that's the abuser, reach out because there's hope for you too. Absolutely. There is, in fact, redemption in mm -hmm. Christ for the very one, for for soul to say, hey, I kind of have an assignment for you, Paul. Why don't you come and walk with me and write the New Testament or a lot of it? And so, no, it's incredible. Gene Eller, thank you so much. Everybody, again, check out Storyville Coffee. Subscribe. If you don't, you're going to feel really bad about yourself <laughs> because this was good information. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gene.